Welcome to part two of our conversation with Angel Veo about home investigations. Do you think there's too much fear in this uh, in this genre? Uh, I mean, obviously, a lot of people get into it because they like getting scared. Um, and and that's kind of the driving force of curiosity in so much of it. But but do you think fear is is overplayed uh, when it comes to paranormal investigations? Oh, so much. Mm-hmm. So much. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, a lot of the, the shows and a lot of these teams for dramatics or what it, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. I mean, they will make something out to be dark and demonic and it's just not. And it's because of that, that fear factor. And the ones that, that do it for that adrenaline rush, they need to just stick to the haunted house attractions and not <laughs> real haunted houses. Sure. Um, cause that's just not what it's about. At least not for me. Never has been. Let me ask you this. This is just an opinion-based question, but it's kind of based on something you had just mentioned. When you were there and and you had seen this little boy, um, and, and he, he had the appearance of the sunken eyes, and you know, lo- mm-hmm. looking like he was dead, but he he right. wasn't there with malice. He wasn't a malicious spirit. He wasn't a demon or anything like that. I- I'm just curious as to what your opinion is on this. Why do you think it is that in some cases uh, a spirit will appear like that, kind of like dead and spooky looking, but they're not really trying to scare and others will appear almost as like the best version of themselves. And then you have everything in between too. Uh, What is that? Do you, do you feel there's a way we can choose how we present ourselves on the other side? Is it a learning process on the other side of how we're presenting ourselves? I have a theory on this. Yeah, well, and it is just a theory, so it's an opinion. Yep. Um, but I think those of us that die suddenly, or are murdered, or you know, when you die and you're in that state of confusion, you know that it happened so suddenly. I think those are the spirits that appear to us in in not so um, presentable ways. Mm-hmm. I think the ones that can transform themselves to look the best, you know, and, and, and appear not so scary, I think those are the people that did know they were dying or do know that they're dead, understand why they're dead, and they have a little bit more control over their appearances. Does that make sense? It does. Do you think it's a, okay. lear- it's a learning process on the other side, too, where where maybe initially one may be presenting themselves like that. And maybe sometime once the boy kind of realizes he's dead, he's on the other side, that that changes in terms of the way he's able to present himself to the living. Or is it kind of, you're stuck, you're stuck. I think how, however you see yourself as a spirit is what you're going to show through to the living. So, you know, if, if, the only thing you can do in a situation like that is, you know, like, you know, they talk about residual hauntings, which is like a loop, an echo of somebody's death. Um, those people, they, they don't even, those spirits don't even know you're there half the time. Those are the ones that tend to be creepy and bloodied and, you know, cut up and what have you. And it's because they don't realize that they're dead. That's why they're in that loop of death to begin with. Mm -hmm. Um, so I don't think those people, unless you can find a way to break that cycle and get through to them and make them realize that they're gone, they're, you know, that they've died, you know, you can move on. You don't have to keep continuing this. Um, I mean, that who's to say that they can't change their appearance once they have that realization? Um, but that's that's something that, that um, I don't know. Like, I think you know, whatever you view yourself as, as a spirit is what's going to show through to the living. What were some of your, uh, or are some of your biggest uh, frustrations when investigating uh, a private haunting? Let, and I, it's a kind of a two part question, frustrating uh, things involving the ghosts first. And then I want to hear about some of the most frustrating parts about it when it comes to the living uh, when doing that. Oh, this is an easy answer. <laughs> Great. Or easy question. <laughs> okay. So, the the, the living, mm-hmm. the ones that watch all the paranormal shows, they are probably the most infuriating because 
I mean, you know what the shows kind of push, mm-hmm. and it's just not like that. Like it, it, it's not how they perceive at all. So when I tell somebody, hey, you know, I'm going to come in, talk to the family, and then I want you all to go, and I'm going to need to be there, you know, to find out who's there and what's going on, and you know, and they said, well, you know, so you need like an hour or two? No. It does not happen in an hour or two. <laughs> um, it can happen quickly, but normally these things take time. It's not something that, you know, goes come out after 45 minutes like they do in a TV show. And then, of course, you have the, the TV people that, you know, listen to all the demonic talk and all these dark entities, and and they're convinced that they have a demon in their house. I, don't, I can't even tell you how many people I've had to try and retrain their brains to, you know, stray away from that whole demonic thing because, you know, I actually said to somebody one time because they were convinced that the devil was upstairs in their bathroom closet. I said, ma'am, I said, I'm not trying to be sarcastic here, but why on earth would the devil, Satan himself, almighty Satan, be in your bathroom closet in Ohio? Please explain this to me. <laughs> what purpose does that solve for the devil? Please, please tell me. And she looked at me dumbfounded because she did not have a, a logical answer to mm-hmm. my question. And it made her think like, okay, all right, maybe it's not the devil. But it could be a demon. Oh, my goodness. Okay, again, why would a demon be in your bathroom closet in the middle of Ohio? Mm-hmm. Did you summon a demon? Well, no, of course not. Okay, why would it even be here? It, it's it's that is the most frustrating part about private cases because ninety percent of the people that call you for help watch mm-hmm. paranormal TV shows. Sure. Um, so that that's it makes the job so much harder because you not only have to try and help them, but you have to try and get them to see the reality of the situation, and it's not easy. As far as frustrating things with the ghosts, I'd say it's most certainly the ones that are, that were self-righteous when they were living and are still self-righteous. Um, I've come across spirits that didn't like people in their home because they had tattoos or weren't married. Um, yeah, just things like that, um, with the spirits can be very infuriating to, to get them to come down off their high horse, you know? (laughs) Mm -hmm. But, yeah, it's definitely the living are more infuriating and frustrating than than the dead, no doubt about it. It, it, I would almost say that the paranormal TV shows have created a world of of paranormal narcissists where (laughs) where they have those those thoughts of like, uh, you know, the devil's in my closet until someone points out going, why would the devil be in your closet? Like, are you that important that the devil is in your closet? Oh, yeah. Then it's like, oh, wait a second. Yeah. Um, right. Right. Let me ask you this. When when you had that experience uh, very early on, you had an experience of you seeing your grandfather before he was dead. And, and this is something that we hear a lot of um, where and it's not even always necessarily when the individual is on their deathbed. Sometimes they're still alive and kicking uh, and, and doing stuff, but they see the spirit of a loved one who, who may be older in many cases, that's how it is. But what, mm-hmm. what do you think is going on there when we encounter what appears to be the ghost or the spirit of someone who is not yet dead? It links to be having psychic and, and uh, medium ship type abilities. Um, you know, which is it's psychic abilities are definitely linked into the paranormal. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think that has more to do with someone's psychic abilities to be able to see somebody's spirit before they're, they're passed on. Um, yeah, I mean, it, if you can sense, because everybody's made of energy, it, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's the age old no, knowledge that energy cannot be created nor destroyed. Mm-hmm. So us, our energy sources are constantly recycled. So I think if somebody can see a spirit of somebody that's not deceased yet, 
it's their energy source that is reaching out and connecting with that psychic. It's not the, the person itself. It's their energy source. Um, so, it, yeah, I, I think that has a lot to do with why people can do that. How often do you think hauntings are, are not ghosts? They're not the dead in terms of, of speaking. They're not demons. They're not angels. But they are the energy sources of the living somehow manipulating our environment in ways that we don't understand that we can. And the only way to describe it, the most common way to describe it is saying ghost. Um, yeah, I, I, I see where you're getting at. And I actually, I try and, and teach people that, you know, something may not be there. It, it, well, let, let's go back first. You said, you know, haunted. That word haunted, that implies that it's a scary, creepy, you know, there's a bad ghost there. Haunted, sure. I use that term very loosely because it's more like you have inhabitants. <laughs> mm -hmm. You have ghostly inhabitants in your home. It's not haunted in the sense that they're, you know, unrest and, and they just want to cause shenanigans like poltergeist or what have you, you know, just that word haunted bothers me um, because it implies so much that it's really not. Um, but other than that, um, what would I, I see, I completely forgot your original question because it was a two parter. <laughs> sure. I, I was going, uh, to talk about, you know, what is it that, um, you know, we're, we're, we're seeing when it is, uh, how, how, oh, how often is it, it something that we're creating okay. as living people and it's that energy that we're, we're putting out there and, and somehow, that's a residual or or, or this, it, it's manipulating things. It's moving things. Um, and, and I will go all the way to say, you know, someone seeing like a, an apparition or what seems to be the body of someone, maybe a shadow person, quote unquote, is, is sometimes that just literally the energy of the living that is is going out there. And that's just kind of how it's it's being represented. It's not necessarily conscious. It's just simply energy. And it's you're catching a wave of it in that form, you know? Right, right. It, it's it's um it's called creative visualization is what that's called. And it simply means that if you focus your energy and your thoughts enough on something, you can create it to make, to manifest it. Um, I see this happen in a lot of popular lo uh, haunted locations that, you know, they may have spirits inhabiting the location, but they're peaceful. They're content. They're at peace. But then you have these people that come in there and they're so hell bent on it being demonic or there's a dark energy here, you know what I mean? That after a while, when so many people go to a haunted location, because that one person started, you know, this nonsense that there's, you know, a demon in the basement at, at, at such and such location, you, you put that out into the world. So every time somebody comes there, they have that in their mind, and they're just going to keep feeding it and feeding it and feeding it. Mm -hmm. And it's going to grow bigger. And... I, yeah, I absolutely agree. I think that you can create something that's not even there by your thoughts. Thoughts are very powerful. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think that they necessarily create spirits, like you said. They create this energy vortex. But by creating that energy vortex from your thoughts, you can allow things to slip in that shouldn't be there because you're creating an, an energy manifestation ball or whatever you want to call it. And if a spirit can get through there, they're going to come through. So you could be, you know, getting not so great um, spirit activity through something like that because you've created this vortex. You know, it, it started out as nothing. You thought it was innocent, mm -hmm. but because you put it out there and let's say 500 people have come through that location and thought the same thing. And, you know, it, it's going to create something. It's just the way it happens with our thoughts. So yeah, absolutely. I think people can do that. Is that what is happening today with, you know, paranormal tourism, essentially where people are going to, set locations that are now designed for investigators to come out and investigate as its sole purpose of existence. Are we stirring the pot? Are we creating more spirits or, 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 or amping up what is already there that way of otherwise slowly kind of faded away? Um, 
in some places, yep, I, I think that's exactly what's going on. Um, but because, you know, the way I went about the paranormal was always to help mm-hmm. either the living or the dead. So, you know, you can't just dismiss a location or a place because um, you think somebody's creating something. Because before that creation was was evolved, there were spirits there. And they still may need help, you know, especially because there's morons out there creating this <laughs> negative energy field. You know, it, it's. I think it's even more imperative to make sure that, you know, the spirits that are legitimately there and have been there and were at peace, you know, I think that they deserve a chance to, you know, if they want to cross over and move on, help them. If they, you know, just want to be, you know, protected uh, away from that negative energy. I mean, spirits will talk to you if you listen. But it's oftentimes when we go on investigations, I don't do this myself, but people that I work with, I'm a stickler for paying attention. If you're going to ask a question, sit down, shut up, be quiet, and wait for the response. Mm -hmm. You can't ask a question and then two seconds later, ask another or start having a conversation amongst yourself because what's the point? Sure. They want to talk. That's what we're there for. We're not here for entertainment. We're not here for an adrenaline rush. I'm here to help whoever needs my help. So it's, yeah, it, it's hard sometimes when those people manifest something that was never there to begin with, but their egos and their adrenaline rush just kind of dictate their brains, and that's what you get. I mean, it's, it's sad, but it's the way it is. That wraps up part two of our conversation with Angel Veo about her experiences on home investigations and her experiences having a life involving the paranormal. Until next time, for The Grave Talks, I'm Tony Bruschi. Thanks for your support, and thanks for listening.